All right, boys, bring it in. Got it. Welcome, fans, to another special episode of Ranger Zed Coach's Corner with Coach Ed. Coach, got the board ready. What's up? I'm all set. I mean, um, I was really inspired by that Bruins game, and I was watching that game, the way the Rangers were playing, uh, especially in the last two periods. It was a playoff-style hockey, and there were three things that I was noticing a lot. All right, first of all, when we talk about defense, a lot of like casual fans, especially a few of my buddies, Islander fans, like the Islanders defense sucks. The defense sucks. It's not just the defensemen, the team defense, there's responsibilities that go on, and there is responsibilities of the forwards that they need to do to help the defensemen. And they'll leave them hang out to dry. All right. So for example, if you watch the Winnipeg game, I think the Winnipeg Jets had four breakaways in that game. At least exactly. three. I think it was I think it was four. Now mm -hmm. part of the situation is if the Rangers are going, the Rangers are going on offense in the offensive zone. Every team is teaching is uh is is telling the defense to join the play along the wall and intercept the passes on the wall and have a board battle when the puck comes around this way. And jump it. Now, there's two what two parts to this situation. Maybe it is a defenseman. He has to read that Valaket says the, the toes of the forwards have to be going down ice. He has to read the way his forwards are. So if we have a forward coming this way, he makes that pinch, and that generally prevents because your other partner's here, an odd man rush. Right? A lot those in those instances, on at least three of them I saw, the D made the pinch. Three forwards were below the hash marks, leaving one D out hanging out to dry, and they jumped it and they got the breakaways because it was on this side. It was a chip, whatever the case was exactly. So team defense in all three zones means a lot. In the offensive zone, it's the high forward going down ice to support the D pinching. And if the puck squirts by, he gets to challenge it over here, and it's not a free puck going out of the zone. Right. So that's the that's the one zone. Now, the other thing I noticed a lot, and I've been talking about it all year, is back pressure. Every time Pasternak had the puck in the neutral zone, they were on him. Wherever he had the puck, there was a forward coming back, angling him on him in the neutral zone. He came over the blue line. There was a forward coming back, angling him here. They weren't just leaving the defenseman to play Pasternak, right? The best players in the league, you're going to have to do that. The, uh, the Panthers are all over Panarin early in the game. He couldn't touch the puck without getting bumped or hit. So mm -hmm. the same situation. You have to have forwards coming back in the neutral zone hard and challenging that forward so the D can then come up and angle him also and pressure him on one side of the ice and not give him the middle of the ice. The Rangers did a very good job of taking away the middle of the ice. Every time a guy broke to the middle, this forward came across. This forward was behind him, giving him a stick check. There was very little time for them to do anything to make a decision without feeling a stick on them or a body or a shoulder or something. And in the playoffs, again, that's where it's going to mean a lot. Now, what does that mean to the goaltender? I mean, I listen to Valaket talk about it all the time. I learned a lot when Lundqvist started doing the telecast and listening to him that the, the goalie has – when the, the goalie's in the net, you think he's doing nothing down here. But he's watching the play develop coming down this way. He's watching who's open. He's watching who's cutting to the middle. And he has to anticipate those plays. If the team is playing good D and he's on stick checks, stick position, back pressure – now he could challenge the puck more and not worry about that weak side pass or the off-wing pass. Now that's the key because the Rangers do a lot of east-west passing on offense, so do a lot of teams. And when you take that away, it gives the goalie a big advantage to be able to make that decision ahead of time and challenge the shooter. And that's part of the reason why I was watching that Quick had such a good game. He was able to see the puck, see the play coming at him, see the defense uh, – the forwards coming back 
seeing the whole play develop and able to challenge the shooter, Marshan, Pasternak, and so on. It seems like uh, lately, Igor, that's the only way he gets beat is when he has to go side to side. Like and complete that's the- east to west. It's happened a few times on the penalty kill. I remember the Penguins game specifically. I think it happened twice. Um, so, yeah, things I mean, like in the- that. I mean, Valakat talks about it all the time, too, getting the goalie to move side to side. Right. Now, in the Winnipeg game, they got lucky. Uh, what's his name? Connor was over here. They made the right play in front. It went off a skate and went to him for the shot. That's why I said that game they lost, but Hellebuck played a hell of a game. And they got – I don't want to call that a lucky goal. They got a gratuitous bounce, and Connor finished it. But they were in that game till the end, and they were playing a good game. Other than the breakaways, they made those four lapses, which I don't think he can do in the, uh, in the playoffs. I don't think they scored. They might have scored on one. I think they scored on one breakaway. Shy, please. Yeah. But yeah, I was going to say in our regular episode, Winnipeg didn't really impress me other than Hellebuck. I mean, he kept a minute. The Rangers hit four. Oh, my masks, God. I think two posts of a uh, butt end yeah. or a sh- stick shaft, whatever. Yeah. Um, he- Hellebuck is a hell of a goalie this uh, season, no doubt. Um, so Team USA is in good hands, hopefully, in the upcoming Olympics. Yep. No, he's he's great. Coach, what, what forwards on the team in those games did you notice – really uh, taking a, you know, a lead role on team defense in particular. I mean, I got to say it was the whole – what they started off slow again against Boston. Boston took the lead. And then you, you start saying to yourself, oh, come on, they're letting them get away with this. You know, why aren't they playing tighter? But then I don't know if it's the coaches talking between periods, which I'm sure they do. I think it was just the whole team. I don't notice one guy. I mean, Kako was doing it. They were all doing it. It was just – I just love watching that kind of play. I love it. That's a playoff type of game, and that shows them that they have the confidence they can play with any team. And, again, they did it again against Florida. After they got through the banging around early, they were able to t- – well, they didn't have ball off playing. They, had, they were missing a few guys, but Reinhardt wasn't getting his chances that he normally gets. He got a couple of chances. But last time they played the Rangers, he got two, I think, right? I think he got two goals. He wasn't getting those free chances. And when he was getting the chance, he got one chance over here. I forget who got the stick on him just at the last second, deflected it up into the crowd. And Mm -hmm. it's that last-ditch effort that's going to mean so much and not giving up on the play. Yeah. That's Definitely. kind of what I was, was talking about in our regular episode about just like those small things, like that little extra effort here and there is going to be a huge difference. Breaking up I mean, plays v- and stuff like that. VC was great. He's if you want to pick out a player against Boston. He was playing really good. I think he's against got a, Florida as well. Yeah, yeah, he's got a little chip on his shoulder still. Don't forget him, uh, Val, uh, Laviolette. Slotting in guys, like you said before, that's creating like a competition. I want to be in the lineup. I want to be picked for the playoffs. So, yeah, you're a teammate. You want to root for everybody, but you want to be there. So you're going to think about your responsibilities as those bottom six, and that's going to make them even better. You think Rempe's not thinking, I want to be in the playoffs? I better throw that hit every time. I better get back. Rempe was making hits behind the net. And then you saw him loop back into the – when he saw the hit was made and the puck going up, he wasn't standing here. He went right to the front. When the puck went out, he busted his ass down. He's he's playing the game the way they want you to. And he's not just watching, you know, and that's going to create that competition in the bottom six, that, that, that helpful competition, not negative. Yeah, you got to have competition in the bottom six because you need energy in the bottom six, and you get energy right. in the bottom six when guys feel like their jobs are on the line, you know, and that's just the reality. Um, mm-hmm. But they all root for each other, you know, especially like Johnny Brodzinski. They love him. You know, I notice a lot. I, I've been paying attention to Brodzinski <clears> defensively. <throat> He's He has turned up. There was a gratuitous turnover in the Tampa game he had uh, Bad. Ten, you know, Bad. 10 days ago. But other than that, I haven't, you know, he's pretty solid defensively, I think. You know, he's yeah. a guy who stands out to me. As, and that's a reason the coach keeps putting him in the lineup, I think. Um, he's trustworthy, right? And that playoffs, coach, you tell me, but playoffs, sometimes a coach would rather have a guy who's like a nothing, 
right? Is it nothing out there than somebody who's a risk reward type player? You know, Brodzinski is mo- most likely to be like a zero, which is beneficial sometimes, right? Does that make sense? Well, I think I think most bottom six guys are that. You want them to be that zero, and then like Eddie said before, you get those bonus goals in the playoffs, the Stefan Mateau overtime goal. You know, not top six guys. That's that surprise. But they're steady all game. They're doing their job, and then they just get that that bonus at the end. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I think the Rangers have a strong team defense. Uh, generally, all season with Laviolette system, it's nice to have a coach with a system. And let's see how it works uh, in the playoffs. You know, and just the just the fact that you're missing Truber and Lindgren, and like you guys said before, Jones is stepping in. I love. Uh, uh, Ruedel, that guy was banging bodies against Florida. You, He's you my would. sixth defenseman. He was banging. He went right back at them. Wait, he's you your sixth defenseman? Like yeah, I don't know. Options. That's a tough one. That's a tough he, one. Who's coming out? I don't know. It's tough. <laughs> you, you're not taking Linger now, right? I got him ahead of Jones. If jo- if there's a guy missing, okay, Jones is seven in the play in the playoffs. Jones is the seventh defenseman. All right, so Ruedel's eight, right? They have eight. So you got when Jones is seven. Out. You got Ruedel is seven. There's only six D in the lineup, though, right? You're not sitting Gustafson or Schneider. You're not sitting Truber or Miller, yeah. and you're not sitting Lingren and Fox. So I don't what know. What I'm saying is that if Lingren is hurt in the playoffs or someone is hurt, he's my sixth guy over Jones. Any, in the we playoffs. didn't see any news on Gustafson. Which, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, we he did. Day we should have talked. We didn't talk about that in the episode. We should have. Um, that hurt. Let's talk about it now for right. the fans that were lucky enough to come over here. Yeah, Gustafson day to day, three three defense injuries. So with that, coach, how much more important is a, a commitment to team defense when you're, you're really you're down three starting defensemen? Well, again, that's that's giving Jones the confidence. Again, if you guys notice, when the Rangers were banging bodies behind the net, Rempe, Goodrow, Boston's defense was just sending the puck up the wall. When they're going after Jones, he's confident his forwards are where they need to be, and he's making plays. Fox is making plays. They're confident in their team coming back and being in the right position. And that's what makes the defensemen better, having that confidence and knowing the players are where they are. If you got even Panarin's been coming down by the hash marks, helping out, sending the puck around this way. He's not up in the neutral zone. You know, you, you, no one's jumping the blue line early. They're down here. They're down here. And, that, and that's what counts. And that's giving any defenseman that's in the lineup the confidence to make the play. Yeah, we tell our players all the time you got to know who you're out there with. You have to make the right plays. You got to make certain passes to certain players and whatnot. And, Especially a defense or defenseman, if you're if they're not everyday starting players or lineup players, it's it's important to be able to just plug and play, right? We talk about systems and stuff with Laviolette, and like Coach Ed just said, if the forwards are, are doing their job, it's very easy for a defenseman just to fit right into the lineup because then it just becomes basic hockey, and you're not asking them to do too much while also being getting getting adjusted to the team or playing with an a, a partner they're not necessarily comfortable with things like that. So, yeah, it's all about trust and and having the right players out there and playing as a unit, no doubt. It makes it a lot easier on the defenseman. And how about Schneid stepping in? Sam, I lost Sam Rosen playing 22 minutes when he's only he's awesome. playing like eight to, eight to ten minutes. He's looking good with Miller. It's going to be interesting. I got to say, him and Miller, Miller's toughening it up a little bit, as much as I hate to say it. No, he threw the body around a lot, but he he doesn't stick with the guy. He throw he yep. hits him in the corner or hits him along the wall, and then just lets him go to the net. He's got. Why would you? Why would you hate to say it though? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Miller Miller plays well, and that bothers you or something. Like I don't get it. That makes no sense. Just to get that rise out of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense. You like root against guys. Like it's crazy. Anyway. Uh, this has been an episode of Coach's Corner with Coach Ed, and it's sponsored by Old Country Tile. Yep. Tell us a little bit about Co- Old Country Tile, Coach. 
Old Country Tiles in uh, Urban Avenue in Westbury, Long Island. If you need anything for your kitchen, bathroom, any kind of backsplash tile, anything that's going on, they have a large display on hand. Very courteous employees at the counter. They'll help you as much as you can. And shoot, shoot in and see Victoria and Maurice. And they'll take care of you. Family owned. Nice little store over there. Make sure you mention Coach Ed and the Rangers Ed podcast if you go in there. Check them out. And thanks for watching Coach's Corner. We'll be back with more content later, guys.